String inverters. DC optimized inverter. Which system gives you the best performance for your home solar power system? I'm gonna be answering that question and teaching you all about solar inverters in today's video. All right, so in today's video, we're talking about solar inverters and which is gonna give you the best performance, string inverters or DC optimized inverters. Now, before we talk about these two options, I'd like to explain a little bit about what inverters are and why all solar power systems have them, or at least all solar power systems that are hooked up to the electric grid. You see, solar panels natively are DC direct current electrical devices, meaning that the electricity that comes directly off the solar cells and the solar panels is direct current, constant voltage. On the other hand, our homes and the electric grid is wired for alternating current, which means that the voltage actually fluctuates in a cycle. Here in the United States, it's, it goes on a frequency of 60 cycles per second. The reason is it's done that way is because alternating current is more efficient for transmission across a long distance. So if you think about electricity is coming from a power plant to a local substation and then across power lines to your home, you get less loss over long distances transmitting that power in alternating current format. And that's why that electrical format won out as far as the electric grid standard. But solar panels themselves and batteries for that matter are both direct current devices, which means that if you wanna turn that electricity into usable electricity for your home or for selling back to the power company, then there has to be an inversion somewhere in the system. So what the inverter does is, is very simply, it's, it's a special type of electrical transformation that converts direct current electricity to alternating current electricity. Now, in the old days, we used what's called string inverters. And the way string inverters worked is we would series connect multiple solar panels together, typically eight to 12 solar panels together in a string. That's what we call a collection of series connected devices is a string. And then we would take the circuit from that solar panel string and deliver it to a string inverter at ground level. Now, the nice thing about the string inverter was that the wiring was very simple. We only generally would have to do two or maybe three circuits from the roof and we could use smaller wire size because the voltage was high coming off those solar strings, typically 300 to 500 volts. And then that could be landed right there at the string inverter, which would then provide an AC output, which could be fed into the house or fed back to the electric meter. Now, the downside though of the string inverter is that the string is only as strong as its weakest link. And so if there ever was damage to one of the solar panels, or maybe there was shading or a shadow cast on one of the solar panels, if that happened, not only would that single panel's performance be degraded, but the performance of the entire string would be brought down. And so since for homes that have partial shading conditions could experience conditions like that frequently, the advent of module level power electronics came about. Now, when we talk about module level power electronics, we're typically talking about either micro inverters or DC optimizers. Uh, and the way that microinverters work, because they came out first in the late 90s. So the way that microinverters work is they would put a small inverter on each individual solar panel. So instead of having a central string inverter to do all of the conversion, you had a microinverter literally tucked underneath, wired underneath each solar panel that did the DC to AC power conversion. Now, the advantage of this is that each solar panel essentially now is operating independently. So if one solar panel gets damaged or if there's shading or leaves cover up one solar panel, all the other panels in the system could still operate at peak power. So it solved the problem of the string only being as strong as its weakest link. However, it did add some additional complexity to the installation because now you have a separate inverter device on each panel and then all of those microinverters had to be connected together with a trunking cable so that that aggregate power could be brought down to ground level and integrated in with the home's electrical system. Now, the other challenge, especially as we're now in the era of integrating solar with battery storage, is that if you wanted to use your solar panels to charge a battery, you incurred what we call the triple conversion penalty because you have DC from solar cells being converted to AC power by the microinverters sent down to ground level. And then if you wanna use that power to charge a battery, you then have to use a rectifier to convert the AC power back to DC because again, battery cells are natively DC direct current. 
just like solar cells. Now, back in 2014, Solar Edge came on the scene with the DC Optimize system. And the DC Optimize system basically combined the performance benefits in terms of shade mitigation that the microinverters offered, but with the simplicity of wiring and the high efficiency battery charging, that the DC coupled string inverters offered. So with the DC optimized system, you have a DC to DC optimizer installed on each solar panel, which essentially allows each panel to operate at its maximum power point. And if one of the panels was damaged or shaded, the, the rest of the solar power could be sort of leapfrog over the underperforming solar panel. So again, you don't have the problem of a string only being as strong as its weakest link. The optimizers alleviate that problem. But by leaving the electricity in DC format, it allows for more efficient inverter operation because now you can take DC power high voltage off the roof to bring down to the optimized inverter at ground level. And now as we're talking about the integration of solar with home battery storage and with electric vehicle batteries, you can take advantage of the more efficient, much more efficient DC to DC solar to battery charging or solar to electric vehicle charging um, or maybe even in the future solar to electric water heating all while that electricity is still in dc format so you're not incurring the conversion losses you see every time you convert electricity whether you're stepping the voltage up stepping the voltage down converting dc to ac or ac to dc every time you do a conversion you lose a little bit of the energy uh, a lot of it's lost as heat. In fact, if you want to go go to one of your DC chargers uh, for your, let's say, your laptop or your cell phone, hold the, the charger. You'll you'll feel warmth coming off of that that uh, that device, and that is energy being lost as heat in the conversion process. Well, the same thing happens with solar. So if you have to step the voltage up, step it down, or convert from AC to DC or back and forth you lose a little bit of the energy each time, so you want to avoid those conversions wherever possible. Now, the other limitation of microinverters, and this is more of a recent problem, because what we've seen is that the solar panel size and power output has increased significantly in the past couple of years, is that a lot of times the microinverter or the inverter's AC power output rating has not kept up with the solar panel power rating. And this creates a situation where you have what's called clipping loss. Now, clipping loss is when the solar panel has a potential to put out more power, but the inverter system that it's connected to has reached its AC power limit. Therefore, you're not able to reach the full potential or take advantage of the full potential of the energy that that solar panel could produce. And so for that reason, the DC optimized system gives you better overall system performance. In fact, when, I, when I've run simulations side by side using microinverters and the DC optimized solution, you generally see about 10% overall energy yield, 10% increase in overall energy yield um, over the annual production cycle of the system. But I think this again is, is especially important now because now when we look at solar power systems, it's not just solar inversion and then sell back to the grid. Now what we're looking at is really solar being part of, a, of an entire home hybrid energy system that includes solar panels, battery storage, electric vehicle charging, intelligent load control, and having all of that on a single platform. So again, if you, if you wanna take advantage of using your solar power in more creative ways, it is much more efficient to do that on a DC optimized system than with a string inverter or a micro inverter based architecture. Now, I know the Achilles heel of the string inverter and the DC optimized inverter is that the inverter itself could be a central point of failure. And I have to admit, you know, in the past, on some of the previous generation Solar Edge inverters, we did see a high failure rate. And so, for that reason, in the past, and I, I was one of the biggest critics of saying that although the optimized, the, the DC optimized inverter system is more efficient, if the reliability isn't there, it still may not give you the confidence that you, you're looking for as a homeowner or as an installer. But Solar Edge has listened. And actually what they're willing to do is to, for those system owners that are already out there that have some of the older generation of the DC optimized Solar Edge inverter, um, they're offering a discounted upgrade if you want to move to the current generation of the home hub inverter where the failure rates are much, much lower and you can take advantage of some of these additional features that we talked about like integrating with EV charging and uh, intelligent load control as well. Um, so if you already own a, a, a Solar Edge DC optimized system out there, 
Um, check out the Re-Energize program. We'll, we'll make sure we get a link in the description below where you can get a discounted upgrade to the current state-of-the-art Solar Edge Home Hub DC optimized solution. Well, folks, this has been a discussion of string inverters versus DC optimized inverters and which one give you the best performance on your solar system. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos we have here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos coming out like this, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner out there, if you're in the process of looking at different solar or inverter or battery options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote for either of these options or, or really any of the leading options, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. It'll take you to our website where you can set up a call with a solar expert uh, or just use our free solar quote tool to find out how much solar or battery storage costs in your area. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.